We live in a fast-paced and hectic world where it's easy to feel overwhelmed, stressed, and out of control. How do you manage all the competing pressures without losing sense of yourself? How do you stay focused enough to not only plot a path, but follow it? Welcome to Master Your Life, a show that offers inspiration, insight, and intelligence, as well as success stories from many walks of life that can show you how you can control your own destiny. Our knowledgeable and entertaining host and her guests give practical advice that you can use every day in the quest to master your life. Now, here's your host, Leah Mattinson. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's show. I'm host Leah Mattinson. It's my absolute delight to welcome Martino Carrera to the show today. Martino, welcome. How are you today? How are you doing today? Great. Thanks. Thanks for having me here. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. So Martino and I met about nine years ago at a painting class that he was not actually taking the painting class. He was the teacher of the painting class. <laughs> and so we uh, developed this great relationship over the span of about a week. And it's so exciting to be able to bring Martino and his work to this audience in this day and age, because prior to now, it would have been pointless. There would have been no way for people to have been able to access what Martino is doing, but now he's online. And so I wanted to be able to share who you are as an artist, what it is that you're teaching people and how actually developing the skill of artistry or creativity helps people to have a more masterful life. Oh, great. Okay. So Martino, where in the world do you come from? <laughs> well, I'm from, I was born and raised in Calgary, Alberta, but um, I'm the uh son of Portuguese and Italian immigrants. So um, uh, I grew up, I born in 66 and also grew up in the seventies and, and eighties in the middle of the, the prairies. There wasn't much in the way of art back then. And of course, being the son of, uh, of immigrants, it was always very important for me to, to go to school. So I was supposed to be a doctor, but uh, that didn't quite work out. I did study pre-medical sciences for a couple of years, but I always had this passion for art, which I ended up following and um, Spent a lot of time in school doing that, actually. So, yes. And you have uh, right now. I kind of split. Right now, I'm just in Europe. I just uh, at my family's uh, property in Portugal. Very beautiful. So, how did you go from being this pre med sort of student to being an artist? Like, how? What was the challenge around that? Because this is the funny thing that's happening right now is people are making a lot of career decisions, and a lot of people are dissatisfied with their work and going, man, I'm like been trapped in this job of the thing that I've been doing for however long. And you made a decision quite early on that the MD thing wasn't for you, but was that a difficult choice to make? Like, Well, I, I mean, I was uh, okay in sciences and whatnot in high school, but I always drew comic books. I wanted to be a comic book artist right. and uh, we used to make movies and do comic books with my friends. And I kind of forgot all that. I didn't even study art in high school. And um Right. did a couple of years of pre-med, but I always ended up drawing portraits of my um, teachers and fellow students in this, the notes of margins of my notes. So um, came my end of my second year, I wasn't really happy with things. I didn't do that as well as I'd hoped. So I decided I would take a, uh, an art class. And my mom encouraged me to take an art class. So I took one that summer and got an A and really enjoyed it. So kind of continued along that path at the University of Calgary in, in Calgary, obviously. Um, and fin end up finishing my Bachelor of Fine Arts uh, there in 1990. I graduated. Right. What a and huge. And kind of did the. Uh, sorry. Right? I say what a huge divergence from like MD. It's like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it take, it's a lot of work to be a, become a doctor. I probably would have got a Bachelor of Science and done something in lab work or something. But I just, I just don't. My heart wasn't in it. So. Right. Um, um, what I ended up doing after that, I did a couple of years kind of working, working in a studio and um, kind of doing different jobs. I guess what you call that the artist lifestyle, I grew my hair long and uh, worked in a coffee shop. So what I did and then I ended up probably going back to school to get a Bachelor of Education at University of British Columbia. And I taught um, junior high school art for a bunch of years in Calgary uh, after that. Wow. And so you, you went to BC took some more education to become a teacher, taught young people. So do you have, have you worked with kids all of your life or was that just a sort of a segment of your life where you actually all my life, uh, starting when I was, um, I think in junior high school, my, my aunt was a teacher in the same 
mm. school that I was at, she had a was it um, a behavioral uh, she had a behavioral adjustment class where she they took troubled kids and worked with them. So it was a really small class. So I actually managed to do volunteer work with her. Actually, there was an option to assist her in her class as part of my one of my classes when I was like 12, 13, grade eight, I think. And I really enjoyed it. I always work, enjoy working with kids. Um, so I've been doing that for quite a, quite a while. Wonderful. Point. And so how did art help those kids that were having the well, It's always a pot, you know, it's another way art, art is a language, right? So it's another way of communicating. So, you know, we would draw things like Star Wars comics and superheroes and stuff like that. They always, all, a lot of them are fascinated by that kind of stuff. And if you can draw, um, it's mm -hmm. kind of a bit of a pathway in to communicating with them and, mm -hmm. and getting a rapport with them. So I did a lot of that with them, I remember. And then um, in, as a school teacher, I tried to structure my classes that, because um, I taught grade one to eight, so that they would learn very specific concepts that would grow on, e on each other from year to year. So, um, you know, the grade ones, I would teach them about simple shapes and color theory, and they could do things like that. And then by grade seven and eight, they were doing cubism paintings and uh, comic books, and it's a lot of fun. They had a lot of, and you know, the amount of creativity that a lot of these kids have um, and the thing that they produced was really fascinating. So, yeah. Oh, I absolutely love it. So I'd be like in grade one, <laughs> 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 just everyone who's tuning in going, man, I went to school that had strictly, you know, an athletics program and a music program. The art was like, eh, not that awesome. Uh, you're not alone. <laughs> so you, you can, you know, pick up at grade one at any time. Would you agree with that, Martino? Do you think you can start art anytime. yeah it's, a, it's a, it definitely it's a it's a language right so like any other language you can can learn the concepts now how talented you are may take you a little bit further but um you know like learning to draw is just like learning to write in a sense mm. mm -hmm. so. how about ride a bike <laughs> similar or ride a bike yeah <laughs> it's a skill it's a skill yeah yeah, yeah. um like to, learning to draw is a lot is basically learning to see right so um, when I teach beginning drawing students, I teach them what to look at and how to see. So, right. um, so I did that for a bunch of years. And then I had the fortune to meet um, a master painter named Michael John Angel, who was born in England, but uh, grew up in Canada and was trained under um, the, the well-known Italian portrait painter Pietro Anagoni in Florence, Italy. So uh, Maestro John Angel, we call him Maestro had a school in Toronto and a school in Florence and I happened to, to meet him um, one weekend I was in in uh, Toronto and I saw a poster for a lecture and went to that and met him and ended up visiting him in 1995 in Florence and had this idea that I would go to study in Italy for for a year which is what I did in the year 2000 I did what, did what was called a uh, deferred leave of absence so the school board um, ah. took uh, part of my paycheck for two years off and then that third year off I had a full paycheck to do what I wanted to so and that shout out to the Calgary School Board which you know big supporter of the art the Calgary Catholic School Board um, big supporter of the arts and the ability to give their teachers uh, options to do that so um, once I got there I fell in love with it I lived in, it was in Florence of course and I was you know you're never more than meters away from a masterpiece when you're in Florence and just uh it was amazing. It was everything I'd wanted to learn because um, contemporary um, art teaching, especially at the university level, doesn't teach you skills. It's more conceptual based or kind of this um, mm -hmm. being original, so you being original, so developing whatever um, idea you might have, how to create or what art is. And I was very much interested in the old masters, you know, Caravaggio, Michelangelo. Um, I had drawn comic books, so I was really interested in the figure and kind of that's a lot of where the where figurative art ended up in comic books because that tradition kind of died out in the 20th century. But um, Don Angel was uh, re was re re resurrecting the uh, 19th century French academic approach to creating art, and had this school. So um, I ended up going there for for a year, and at the end of that year, I was just kind of put it out there to the to the universe or to whatever God is just said boy, how can I, how can I make this happen? How can I just stay here longer? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the very next day, um, the maestro said to me, you know, we're going to expand the school and we'd like to take you on as a, a teacher. So if you're interested, 
that'd be great. So that, of course, was my entryway to, to right. stay, right? So I'd be able to teach part-time, continuous studying, and not have to worry too much about money because some of that would be, would be covered. Right. So, so how was that kinda... moment? How was that moment when, uh, because I think, again, it's like a lot of people have the experience of really wanting something. And then we only yeah. get in our head about it and we just think about it. But when you've got this heart centered request uh, for really having a clear alignment and a clear path laid for you and you ask for it, then when it happens, it's magical. Like you just go, yeah. oh, look at that. It exactly just happened. What it was. <laughs> So, it was instantaneous. It was amazing. Even thinking about it kind of sends shivers up my spine because it's, I've, if you know Joseph Campbell and his whole concept of follow your bliss, you know, um, build, you know, just go in the direction of your bliss and the doors are open. That's exactly what happened. Um, it kind of went, you know, I was wonder about, and I, t- I told other students there that were in Italy and want to do that. Just, just go for it. The money will appear and you'll be able to do it. And it, it kind of happens now happened to me anyways, that way. So I took another extended leave of absence for another year. And, um, I decided just to, to stay in Italy and end up finishing the program and teaching there at the school in, in Florence full time. And so what were your biggest challenges during that time, Martino? Like you would have moved away from your family. Um, yeah. you would have been away from Calgary and your, you know, you know, your main pool of people had you developed a good group of friends in Florence like oh yeah um Florence there's like 40 American universities there plus you know people from all over the world go to Florence so um I had a really good group of friends that I had made um in my second year there I got a part-time job (laughs) opening um I don't know if you've been to Florence but they have the San Lorenzo market is these um, stalls of gloves and purses and whatnot Mm. So I'd go every morning at 7 a.m. to uh, get the cart, set up the gloves and purses, and then go to school and come back at night and and uh, take it down. So that put me in. There's a lot of Mexican people and Brazilians working there at the same time. So I got a whole bunch of those guys as friends. And um, yeah, it was it was a great time. And you know, Florence is such a human city, right? There's no cars in the center. People walk everywhere, ride your bike. Um, you know, there's coffee shops all over the place. So yeah, there's no problem with friends. Of course, I, had to, I learned Italian. I didn't speak it before I left, even though my mother uh, is Italian. She was born in Canada, but her parents are, are Italian, and um, I did end up learning Italian. So, and that was um, eventually. It's very difficult to get to actually enter into Florentine society in the sense of getting Florentines friends. The Florentines stay somewhat apart, I think, from the course but i did end up making a few and that got me into another society where it became what was called uh, a spandiatore a flag waver this traditional florentine group of flag wavers all florentines i was the um, only canadian on the on the group wow. um, and we go out you know special events and throw flags in the air and do you know perform for people if you go on youtube you'll see you'll see it awesome that uh, it's like yeah we all have to check out the youtube we'll put all the links in the show notes um, sure, so that yeah. people who are coming to masteryourlife.ca can actually get access to all of your YouTube videos. And, set. and uh, so what was it about you that set you apart that you were actually asked, do you think, to be a part of that? Um, uh, uh, how, uh, I'm trying to remember how that worked. I became friends with uh, another artist, an American guy, and he had been living there for a while and he was actually part of the group. Hmm. Um, and so then through him, I got to know a couple of the guys. One of them was the captain and we became friends. And then he asked me, why don't you come out and, um, flag wave with us? You'd be the, you know, the first Canadian doing it. So I said, oh, sure. That'd be great. So, oh, just love it. so and there's stars that- in my head. I got a few in my head, split my head open a couple of times, but <laughs> oh, maybe your lighting they is good they- enough <laughs> that I can't Yeah. See. They call it the baptism. So. <laughs> <laughs> That is hilarious. I have a scar on my head too, but it's not from flag. (laughs) It's from renovating. (laughs) (laughs) We always wear our scars. That's right. Exactly right. So that's, so you, again, we're following your bliss. I would suspect that you were like, went. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just was, you know, I was teaching, I was living in an amazing place. I had an apartment in this um, 
building that was like a hundred steps from the front door of the Uffizi. So it was, you know, right in downtown Florence. And uh, I rode my bike everywhere. You know, if I need to go somewhere, take the train. So it was, it was really great. Definitely. Uh, so was it hard to be disciplined there? Or was there a discipline? Not really? Um, I mean, I, I had my job, right? So, um, and then, I, so I was teaching and then, no, you, you know, not really get up, go to work. Right. On the way home, you swing by the store and get some stuff for supper. And yeah, because yeah. you're just hanging out with cool people doing cool things all the time. So it makes it easy to be disciplined and accountable, <laughs> right? Because you're not laying in bed going, oh, I hate my work. I hate these people. My life is terrible. Uh, which well, I you're think teaching, right? So it's like any teaching job. But, um, you know, anything is you get literally people from all over the world that were at that the school. It's called the Angel Academy of Art. And you know, every, pretty much every country. And the nice thing about that is, I can, I started traveling after I left to Florence, and, and I could literally go to a city and say, "Who's here?" And someone would say, "Ah, me." And so, you know, all over the world, I know people, which is kind of kind of nice. Oh, so much fun! So much fun! Yeah, because it makes you a multinational person with this, multi, you know, all of these skills and just knowing how to uh, behave, greet people, interact with other people from all over the globe. It is absolutely an astounding gift to have. And I want people just to stick around because we're going to talk about as we get through the into the later part of the episode, how you can take classes from Martino. So I want to make sure that you all stick around to the end of the interview so you can find out more information about that. Because one of the things that I love and love about this show is the opportunity to bring really excellent mentors to my audience, teachers and mentors, and you're one of those. Um, so you're this world class, Thanks. yeah, just world class, <laughs> excellent um, man uh, of good character, and you're teaching this fine art. Uh, and I, I guess that um, over the span of time that we've known each other, known of each other, like nine years ago when we met was the first. Um, you know, we were doing this um, class in Alberta, Canada, and they just put out a Kijiji ad for a model for a painting class, and I thought, well, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to apply and, and laughingly thought, I think I was 40 at the time and went, there's no chance that I'm going to get picked. But when I did get picked, I was like, oh, awesome. And I got picked because I have red, curly, very difficult hair and I'm out. I'm, I'm difficult. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's about sums it up. <laughs> but so I, when I went to the class and was sitting for the class, the other thing is I had wanted to learn how to be disciplined around sitting quietly because part of my problem in my life mastery is how to calm down and sit calmly. <laughs> and so it was this learning thing for me because the class went on for, I think it was at least a week. It might've been 10 days. Yeah, it was uh, five, five days, I think. Five days, yeah. And you were teaching at- I, I have to look back actually, because sometimes it was five, sometimes it was 10. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit, but it was lots of fun. And one of the things that I learned from the students as I sat there quietly, um, there was two of us models and there was, you know, four people, I think, or five painting each one of us was that when I got up and actually looked at the progress that each one of the students has made, I was absolutely struck with the perspective, the difference that people's perspective made on how I looked in their artwork. Um, and so one person, I thought that looks how I think I look. And then another person, I thought, oh, my gosh, I look totally exactly like my Auntie Rosemary in this one picture. <laughs> so it's like, is everyone I'm going, oh, my goodness. Look. And it was just this. So it was this very huge learning um, thing for me about perspective, about being quiet, about being, you know, serious, but then playful outside the classroom. So there's lots of elements that are very um, challenging and fun, because when you're spending that much time uh, with a group of people, you do get to know some of the their things and their challenges. Uh, and so it must, yeah, it was just such a gratifying experience. And flash forward now, nine years later, and uh, you guys can all check out Facebook and, and see uh, Martino's Facebook and my Facebook, of course, and check out the images. I definitely have images from that time because it was such uh, an amazing experience and not one that I've ever done again, although I did want to sit again in I have to change that <laughs> yeah, exactly I was like I want to it's just like I want to do it because it was just so good um, but if you have an opportunity um, you know audience to either sit for a class uh, does does it is that a big help when you actually have models Martino are models easy to find are they hard to find like what do you look for um 
they're not they're not too hard to find actually yeah. i i put in canada i put some um, something in kijiji and i've got some yeah several models come forward both for portrait and for new because i work figuratively um some have some have uh, experience others just want to do something different mm -hmm. so um yeah it's not really too hard here in 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 florence when we when uh, we were teaching, it was mostly students, like uh, students from local schools that would come. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the Italians are famous for their beauty. And if you look at, if, if you go to Italy, you, you'll actually see the people from Renaissance paintings on the street. So it was really nice to have, uh, have all those fantastic models there. Yeah, so much fun. And so now flash forward, that, that was up to 2000. What happened after that? What were you up to after? Florence. Oh, so uh, um, I did a master's in uh, sacred art and architecture in Rome in around 2009, 2010. Um, it was a um, program that was put together to teach artists and architects the um, history of and theology and philosophy of the art of the Catholic Church mm -hmm. to try and renew the, um, the, the mass, I guess, the and to kind of re-inject some, um, some more traditional aspects of what was created artistically um, in, in churches in the past, right? So if you think about the Sistine Chapel and Michelangelo, like all, you know, all those great artists of the Renaissance are telling the, the kind of Catholic Christian story, right? Um, and of course that disappeared really um, in the 19th and 20th century got a lot of like felt banners in the churches but um that whole art tradition that um the orthodox church actually carried on they still have a strong art tradition the catholics not so much so um it was about about trying to reinvigorate that and teach artists how to work uh, in that tradition so it's taking the skills that that many of us, of us had and then um giving us formation in order to understand how to use those skills um, in a very specific way for a specific thing. Um, so I did that and then I, I, was, I left, left teaching in Florence and decided to um, kind of go out as a full-time artist and, and, and teach. And I, was, I started being invited to teach uh, different places around the world. So I still go back to Italy. Um, I spent a lot of time in Australia and Tasmania. Um, with a school down there, the Brisbane, Brisbane Street Arts School run by Leonie Duff. And it was down there about four times, I think. Fantastic. If you like, who goes so what do you do in a street art amazing. school? Yeah. What were you doing in the street art school? Oh, it's, just, it's just the name of the school. So I was teaching drawing and painting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd go down there for a month and, and teach and then did also in Vancouver and here in Portugal as well. So um, I was doing a lot of traveling, which was was nice. And so do you miss and, that? Uh, <laughs> do you miss the yeah. travel? <laughs> yeah, that's all ended, obviously. Um, I, it was time to, I was, it, let's say it makes for a little bit unstable lifestyle. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, as nice as it is, you know, spending winters in Australia when it's minus 30 in Calgary. Um, yeah, so it's just time for something different. Um, of course, with the loss of that, big chunk of my income disappeared. So I made the transition out to online and building a website and doing these online classes as well as commissions, uh, some commissions as well, to kind of keep going. Right. And so what's been your favorite commission that you've done? Ooh. Um, it wasn't really a commission, but uh, when I did my, the master's program in Rome, Mm -hmm. You get to do what was called a ma your master's piece, right? So this was kind of you have to you write a thesis and do a, a well for me a painting. If for a sculptor, it would be a sculpture. For an architect, it would be design design a church based on your studies. So I did a painting um, that tried to combine the Eastern idea of the icon and the resurrection of the icon with the Western kind of Caravaggio-esque style, yeah. and. Um, that painting ended up in the collection of the Vatican. So that was kind of nice. Um, and then more recently, I've done a lot of portraits for different people. And more recently, I did fi just finished uh, a um, 
painting of St. Joseph and the Christ child for a church in Italy. That was pretty good. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So you're you st stand out. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And so you must have those pictures on your Facebook and on your, on your uh, website. Yeah. Sure people can check yeah. those out. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So now you've got this online class. Let's talk about that because um, 2020 was a really cool opportunity for a lot of people who'd never taught anything online at all to yeah. go, Oh, now I've got to learn all this crazy technology. And, um, but I'll tell you what, as someone who's actually been a podcaster for a number of years and coached online for a number of years, 2020 was the very best year to do that because the technology guess, was actually yeah. all evolved enough. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> so man, we trial run a lot of stuff. You guys like the 2020 people who came on, it's like you guys came on to such a nice um, technology platform to work with. Uh, so how has it been to, to bring your classes class online? Like, what is your focus? What do you teach people? Um, I've been teaching pretty much just uh, painting process. So painting. I've done, yeah, so how to, how to say the steps in painting a portrait, mm -hmm. for example, is one that I did through actually the Brisbane Street Art School, their online platform, and that went pretty well. Um, and then I did uh, one on the late method of Caravaggio, so a very particular way of painting that he used in his late, late period, um, and another one based on 19th century approach to painting portraits. So right now it's pretty much just portrait painting, but I'm also developing two drawing courses, one drawing the figure and one drawing the portrait. Most people are interested in drawing in painting, but to tell you the truth, painting is just drawing with color. So if you don't have the drawing skills, it makes it a lot more difficult to, to get good painting. Um, so yeah, these things, these things take time, but I've developed these classes. You can do them independently or I run them kind of every couple of months as a group. So either way you can either do it the group setting where you're working kind of under very strict, um, say, setup over a number of weeks, or you can do it independently where you work at your own pace. And so what's the benefit of taking a class online? Would you say what's the feedback that you've gotten from your students? I've gotten pretty good feedback, and I was all pleasantly surprised how um, well it, wor it worked. And, and obviously nothing replaced being in person, but there's a lot of pluses to working online. First of all, you, you've got the camera like right over your shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. So that um, they're seeing everything you're doing. And my demos um, during, let's say a workshop would only be maybe an hour a day, maybe less. Um, here, every class is like two to three hours of pure demo that's recorded with my commentary. And then people can go back and watch it as they, they like, as they want, right? So mm -hmm. um, that's a huge, huge plus. And, uh, um, I really kind of enjoyed enjoyed that that kind of extended demonstration. So that was really good. And then you know people can then you know go off to their studio and work at their own pace and get as much or as little done as they want, really. Um, and then I give them kind of individualized feedback. I take their image and on Photoshop I'll go through and like make corrections or point things out, things that they could do um, in Photoshop. So. It's pretty good, um, and the phone, you know, the, the phones that we have take great photographs, or if not a phone, but photographs are pretty good now for, for this. Um, not 100% like it would be in, in person, but for most of uh, the level, it's, it's actually pretty good. So um, yeah, I've been pretty, pretty pleasantly surprised and gotten pretty good feedback so far, so. I love the idea of the repetition because that's what it takes to actually learn something. So per, what is it? Perfect. If you want perfection, you have to do perfect practice perfectly. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like these the little, the ability to go back and actually have really good coaching and to be able to see it, to hear it, to feel it, to apply stuff. We always tell people when they're watching this show or listening to this show to write, get out your pen and paper and write things down because not everyone learns visually and not everyone learns auditorily. So part of the benefit of doing these online courses over and v, being visual is that over a podcast, for example, you can actually see the expression on somebody's face. So you know what the intent is where sometimes on a podcast, if you're just listening to something, you don't necessarily catch right. all the 
responses. Uh, so with the online courses or watching the video replays of the Master Your Life show, all of those things are nuanced. Like if you watch this episode on YouTube or on the masteryourlife.ca website, what you'll see behind Martino is some of his art that you will, <laughs> will have missed if you're only listening to it on a podcast. Uh, and so the, the, like you can scroll in on screens, you can enlarge screens to take a look at things. It's quite, um, it's very robust and powerful technology that we have now, even iPhones or phones, the quality yeah. of the photography is incredible. So instead of having to run out and buy, you know, professional level cameras for taking photos, a lot of people are just using their, using their smartphone <laughs> to, to do yeah. all this stuff. It's getting better every generation too. So yeah, it is getting better each generation. So, so the way that you teach the classes is based on somebody else's learning uh, that took them a long time into their life. What was that fellow's name again? The class that you teach uh, the, uh, the oh, specific artist, um, the maestro or Caravaggio. Yes. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Caravaggio was um, a painter from the, uh, 17th century. Mm -hmm. So he was born in uh, just outside of Milan and he actually revolutionized painting. Um, up to that point, painting was um, what they called the, um, was, it was just after the, the Impressionism. So it was, it was Mannerism, not Impressionism, sorry, it was after the Renaissance and the High Renaissance. And then it was what was called the Mannerist period where it was kind of a, a bit of a repetition and development of the ideas of the Renaissance. Um, almost like philosoph more philosophically based hmm. and Caravaggio shifts to a very much a visual and natural way of, of painting. Um, not quite photographic because they still look at painting, but they are a lot, a lot different than what had come before. So they're very much like, like um, dramatic scenes acted out under a flash of light. So, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy darks and light lights and um, very distinctive style that then kind of influenced history of art up until today, even I work in that, that style. But he had different periods. So I look at his very last period. Um, in addition to being a painter, he was also a, a criminal. He had murdered someone. So he'd been up on the run for the last part of his life, still getting lots of commissions because he was the most popular painter. But he developed a method that was very kind of quick. And- Because um, he was on the loose. run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. He left, he left Rome. As I said, Rome for Bet, Bet went to Naples, went to um, Malta, went to Sicily, back to Naples, and then he was supposed to get a pardon from the Pope. Made his way back to to make his way back to Rome. He 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 died somewhere else. Either got murdered or got uh, malaria and died. No one knows, but um, died on the way back. So died quite young too. Fascinating story of fascinating life, but uh, an amazing paintings. Right, quite tragic. That's uh... yeah. Maybe that's part of the journey of some, lots of the artists, lots of- Some of them, yeah. Well, it's kind of that, it, he's, he's kind of a, an artist that, that fell out of favor for hundreds of years after his death. But he seems to, to us kind of be very contemporary because his painting is very much about his life. Like you'll see the same people over and over again in his paintings. Um, there's lots of documentation of his run-ins with the law and, um, you know, a fair amount about him. So he's very kind of contemporary in that sense that he's, you know, like, he, so he's very appealing to, to contemporary pe people and painters. So what makes your, what makes a successful artist? Oh, good question. <laughs> so trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. It's like, what does, I gotta, we got a piece of my artwork. Hang on. I'm just going to walk over here and get one piece of artwork that I think is incredible. All right. And if you're not watching on the video, you're going to totally miss it, everybody. All right. Ooh, Isn't awesome. that nice? Hang on. <laughs> that's, very, to... that's very contemporary. Yes. <laughs> sell that for big bucks. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's my grandson a couple of years ago. <laughs> but I went, that's actually probably better than anything I have drawn in the last 10 years. That's, it's all there. You don't need anything else. It's great. Uh, right. <laughs> so what does make a successful artist? Because in my mind, <laughs> this is pretty successful. It makes me smile. It communicates that uh, somebody's happy with a big flower, you know, <laughs> only got one eye. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, maybe you're looking from the side. Oh, maybe. <laughs> See, it's all about perspective again. This exactly. is <laughs> why these in-person <laughs> things are so important. <laughs> oh, so funny. So yes, because I do hear, you know, like a lot of people are afraid to take on art uh, or, you know, they, they're afraid to commit to, there's an investment of time, mm-hmm. resources, um, and you're, it's like a personal, it's a very personal thing because you're putting your stamp on something and people are often evaluating it. Like there, so if the evaluation isn't, doesn't feel good, if people are critiquing, you know, it can be a pretty, what do you call it? It can be quite emotional. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if, first of all, it's a job like any other job. So you have to take it seriously. Mm-hmm. Although there are, there is a certain genre of art that's uh, where we celebrate the say um, the personality of the artist rather than the artwork. That's very much a, a kind of contemporary way. So I'm in a more traditional field. So um, it's something that kind of disappeared for a hundred years or so and just started becoming, um, I guess, reviving maybe 30, 40 years ago in the eighties in Florence, a couple artists started that. And um, you wouldn't believe the amount of young people that are studying this now. So, um, but the ones that are successful are, are the ones, first of all, that work hard, <laughs> um, that are producing work consistently. Um, you know, I've taught a number, probably hundreds of students. So, and several of them have gone to be very, very successful. So I just look at them and when I'm, you know, and then if I have new students, I can say, well, you know, let's say someone like the painter Cesar Santos uh, has done very well. Um, came to America as a Cuban immigrant at 12 years old and, you know, kind of lived the American dream, went to Florence and, you know, studied his, finished a four-year program, two years, mm. and went on to just keep working hard. So, um, you know, just as a student, he was someone that just did exactly what he was asked, you know, just he never argued with instructors or or, you know, that he wanted to express himself because this art is not about expressing yourself. It's about getting a certain level of skills that, that then your body kind of becomes um, able to channel whatever inspiration you have and you can do what you want rather than struggling with your materials. You can, you have know, mastered your materials, you know how to do something, then you can very easily express whatever idea you want, right? So, um, yeah, that, I th- that's pretty consistently that I see those artists that are already kind of <clears throat> at the top of this genre is that they're producing a lot. Um, a lot of them are very pretty prominent on social media. Hmm. Um, that's another, another thing that's can be very helpful. Um, and then, you know, having a certain unique vision, I guess, is, is also important. So because we train all these students the same way. So they kind of exit the academy mm-hmm. um, with the same skills, like, you know, learning how to por- paint a nude figure, paint a portrait, paint a still life. But then, you know, then what do you do with that, right? So the ma- way, different ways that people have gone and created kind of very unique way of working mm-hmm. is very interesting, so. Yeah, it is very interesting. Yeah, kind of, yeah. I kind of, I will liken it to um, when you learn um, and become really proficient at ballet, then you can do every other dance really well from the basis of kind of that mm. formal ballet teaching or, right. That um, makes sense. Yeah. Or from classical music. If you learn how to actually read music and run scales on whether that a piano or a guitar or whatever it is, when you have the structure of reading music and being able to play music, then you can create from that, um, uh, that foundation. So the foundation piece is what actually allows you the freedom. Um, once you learn it all, because you have that structure to work within, um, yeah. that really pulls on all of the excellence that you're, you're now neurologically wired to. Uh, exactly. Create. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You don't need to worry about your instrument or your ability to do it. Now you art used to be, music still has that art used to be like that too, right? It used to be mm-hmm. very specific set of skills and, You'd have, you know, guilds and whatnot. And nowadays it's not like that. Just anyone that puts paint on a, a 
piece of paper can be considered an artist. So, and some people do well at that. So, right. Yeah. Um, and cast no judgment, carry on. It's, yeah. just, it's like for some, I, my interest has always been like in the tradition. So yes. in learning how to, how to draw, draw a portrait, you know, paint a portrait, how to paint a, paint a figure, do multi-figure compositions, things like that. So that's just been my personal mm-hmm. passion and kind of chased, chased it for quite a while. So can you speak to this maybe, um, because I'm curious, a lot of people who might be interested in doing fantasy art or that kind of thing, would they actually have um, formal training that would be similar to what you offer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of schools. Yeah, definitely. Because they have to learn how to draw the figure. A little bit different training in the sense that they, if they're working, like I work pretty much just for models, right? So I'll set up a model and paint a model. Mostly it's portraits. So there's, if you imagine, say, a comic book artist has to learn how to draw a figure from any position, any, you know, any view. So right. slightly different training, but it's a lot of training. <laughs> yeah. You can't just set up a model and copy. You have to understand it, turn it in your head. So that there's like a lot of, of work in, in that skill as well. But having that foundational um, teaching is, uh, would you say that, because I, I, what I think is it's that would make the job easier. So if somebody's thinking about actually going into graphic art or um, yeah, yeah. being fantasy art, that kind of thing, that this We've would also several... be a benefit yeah, we've had several. It's, you know, they're just, it's basic art making skills, right? So learning how to draw what you see, learning how to paint, learning about perspective, learning about color. Um, and then, like I said, we've had, uh, there's a few um, that I just think off the top of my head that we've had that have taken the night when I taught in Florence that did the program and gone on to just be illustrators. It's successful. Ah, yes. Yeah illustrators that's and because of uh, like I wrote a book and went who the heck could draw this, these pictures for me and I really wished I could have drawn myself because I in my mind's eye I could see what I wanted yeah. to put on the paper but I just couldn't get it on the paper and my other you know like life was happening and so that the learning the skill hasn't happened yet but it's not too late to learn the skills of these things it's like never it's never too late to kind of jump in and take a chance and and go what undeveloped things might I have that would be able to enhance my life as I, um, you know, am, am moving into my create more creative phase, no matter what age you are. So I love that you said young yeah. people are uptaking um, the course. What's kind of the general age would you say that you're seeing people entering your, your teaching? Well, I haven't taught like at actually the full time at the school for a number of years, but um, <clears throat> like we had students from like 15 to to 80 pretty much but uh back then it was mostly like kind of 20 kind of mid 20s but um when i left there started being like 18 year olds coming from high school Mm -hmm. to study with us and so i'm thinking of of one one girl in particular um savannah cuff who studied with us and was you know you could tell right from the beginning she was 18 she was very talented and she did program in florence and then she went to study with another school in, in New York and she's you know in last I guess eight years or so nine years now is like pretty much a master and she's only 27 you know 28 doing amazing amazing work and yeah. that so anyone who's kind of had the opportunity to think I'd like to paint or I've got you know I bought a box of paints five years ago and haven't got them out but I wanted to get them out <laughs> this might be yeah. the time for you to consider um, doing that and that it's easier now than ever to actually get connected with somebody who's a masterful, um, educator. And so let's talk a little bit more about your course, Martino, because you've got a couple of offerings. One is that you can, people can come and take a class with you, um, in person or like, or they can take a class online with you. That's instructional and, uh, they have to show up for every class. And then you have another option, which is people can just sign up and take it whenever, but can, can yeah. you talk about kind of the differences between those things and what might be more appealing for different people? Yeah. So it depends on, on people's kind of personal motivation. Like you know, some people would get more um, out of it if they have to be there at a certain time to kind of follow along and they want to interact more, say, and ask questions as they go along with me live. 
and then kind of go off on their own. Well, there's other people that just kind of want to say, okay, I'm just going to, today I'm going to watch the video and then I'm going to do some work and kind of work at their own pace, with no pressure. Like they might take more than a week. They might take two or three weeks to do one stage. Whereas um, on the kind of live class, it's week by week. So you've got to say every week, you've got to have a skill kind of, or a section covered, right? So that I can give you the feedback, then we can go on to the next one. Now you, I do allow for more time, like, after the classes ended, people can, can still work and, and send questions and I'll, I'll give them feedback. So it's not like the class actually ends. There's a bit of flexibility there, but really depends on how people knowing what, what they like to do. So um, with, we you're working at your own pace, you don't have, I don't have like live interaction. People just can email me a question and then I'll send a, an answer and then give them video feedback. Whereas on the live, it's two days a week that we're, all together as a class and people can ask questions although you know that not have as much as you would think people pretty much i try to be pretty thorough in my explanation so it's really just people are kind of what they want or what they know about how they work themselves Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the translatability of the energy, I think, has improved over the internet also. Um, at one time, uh, even like just with the webcams, things were pretty flat. Um, now you can get uh, the aspect of actually attending a class online can be more like being live than it's ever been. And so for yeah. people who go, oh, I have a difficult time with um, either signing up for classes or getting online to the Zoom room or whatever, however it is that you run that, Martino. It's getting easier. Yeah, it's through Zoom. Uh, yeah, it's through Zoom. So it's it gets easier, you know, and the uh, uh, as technology evolves. So I think that technology took a huge leap in 2020 because so many people were going online. So it's better. It's a better time now than ever to pull out all the stops, really, and to go. Why couldn't I take a class? from a guy who's in Portugal. Why couldn't I take a class from, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, wherever around the world. And also to have the aspect of um, hanging out with somebody who has been around, uh, you know, to uh, learn from an enormous amount of people um, and who culturally has this really great understanding. And so you will learn more of the nuanced things from you I think than just taking kind of a play by play um, from from up from other people. So when you're vetting a teacher for yourself, I would encourage you all to check out Martino's work. Check out the show notes afterwards to make sure that you can check out check out the YouTube, his uh, website, uh, and and even if you test run a course or two. Uh, then you can actually get a sense of is this a fit for me or is it not? But if you've got some sort of a little lit up right now and you're thinking, geez, I wanted to take up painting, you know, five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago, how can you create that in your life right now? Um, and so what's the biggest satisfaction for you as a, as a teacher, Martino? Oh, um, it's just, it's, well, it usually comes at the end when people are, are giving me their feedback and it's been pretty positive um, yeah. that they actually have learned something. So if they feel that they've learned something that they've, they were happy with the class, that's kind of obviously the main thing. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, kind of the day-to-day -day stuff, or let's say class to class stuff where people might ask questions and try to, to clarify things. It's a bit of a challenge sometimes so that I can put things differently. That can also be a, a good uh, chance to to grow a little bit or learn something different myself. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. We're out of time for this interview, which is too bad because we could keep talking forever, I'm sure, about <laughs> why people should <laughs> check things out. Um, but if, again, if, awesome. this has, if this has spoken to you, then uh, be sure to reach out. Um, you can find Martino on the masteryourlife.ca website um, or on his uh, social media or on his website. Uh, and I just want to invite everyone to think about how this could actually help you in your health and your wellness um, as you enter this, uh, you know, kind of last quarter of 2021 uh, and, you know, moving on into 2022. How could this expansion of your own creativity actually help you to be a more grounded person with a more open heart and a more alignment in your in your brain? Uh, because that's what art does and is. 
Uh, everyone, love yourselves, love each other, mind your minds. That's all for us. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you for being a part of our program today. Master Your Life is a presentation of Leah Mattinson Enterprises, Inc. Join us next time on Master Your Life, helping you to discover the very best of you.